Hello, my name is Rebecca Hall, and today I'm going to show you around in Redman Web, Cochrane's new authoring tool. Redman Web is the predecessor of Redman 5 and supports core parts of the review process. We will start off by taking a look at the benefits with our new web client. Um, so there are quite a few perks of using Redman Web that will make your life easier while editing Cochrane intervention reviews. So let's get started. First of all, it's a web client. This means that you can access Redmond Web anywhere on which computer you want, as long as you have a browser and internet connection. No need to evade the firewalls in your institution in order to download the program, as was often the case with Redmond 5. Redmond Web works best with Chrome, but other up-to-date browsers will also work. Because it's a web application, you will also be able to use plugins that can add functionality that you need that's no, not yet implemented in Redmond Web. And another benefit of using Redmond Web is that it allows authors to work on the review at the same time. So you could be writing on the results while our co-author co is entering result data. And of course, all your work is saved automatically. As soon as you move out of a text box or navigate to a new page, your work is safely saved. And uh, systematic reviews can often become large. And Redmond 5 have, have always struggled to handle this. But in Redmond Web, you can smoothly work on large reviews without any problems. Um, another important thing to note with Redmond Web is that we're continuously improving it. Um, you will get access to improvements and new releases every two weeks. Uh, and there's no need for you to actually download that. It will just be there when you open up Redmond Web. And there's a team of persons dedicated to make sure Redmond Web has the functionality you need. So we're looking forward to hear what features you request after using the application for a while. Uh, but let's now take a look at how Revman Web looks like. So, we're now in Revman Web. This is the first page, the dashboard that you can see. It contains an information, some status information, validation, where you can actually see what things you need to still complete in the review, um, and the history. In the left-hand navigation, you can access most parts of, of the content in your review. So we have the text, review info, studies, references, analysis, and tables. Um, in text, um, I'm going to show you just how you're editing the text. We'll go to um, results, uh, and I can add some content here. Um, so, new results. And while in the text, you can also open the context panel. The context panel contains contextual information. Uh, so, you'll be able to see, for example, standards that relate to this, uh, the, this heading. So, for example, you have flow of studies, uh, and you can see the measure guideline connected to the text section you're in. And so right now we're in the default view, and that means you're looking at one text section at the time. If you want to read the review in full, you can go to the full text view, and I can show you just where we were. If we go to the results, you can see that what I just added is now here. Um, and the context panel is, of course, also uh, available here. And so this means you can read the whole review in its full content. And it also allows you to use Control F to find any content in the review and browse through it. But let's go back to the default view because I want to show you some of the differences between Redmond 5 and Redmond Web. Um, so let's go to the studies and look at the included studies. So Ruffman Web has a study-centric view where all the data related to that study is within, uh, within the study itself. So here, when you go to an included study, you'll have references, characteristics of the study, and the risk of bias all in one place. 
So if you go to the full text view, you will, however, have all of this content on top of each other, showing uh, uh, what you need. And another difference is the analysis. Um, so if you go into an analysis, you'll see the comparisons or what we call analysis groups. They will contain analysis that you can then edit. And when you go into edit it, you'll see the data table um, and you'll have options to set up your uh, analysis. And of course, if you look at the graphs, that's where you'll see. Uh, will you see, see the forest plot with the risk of bias on the side, which you can choose to have or not. Um, so those are some of the main differences. I want to just give you a few tips on how, where you can get help. So basically, we have a lot of training materials for you to be able to learn how to use Rev and Web, but also, of course, to write your review. Uh, so we have a direct link to the Cochrane Handbook and Style Manual, and of course we also have a link to the Knowledge Base, which will help you with anything you need to do in Redmond Web. Um, if you go to Practice Your Reviews, uh, you'll be able to create reviews that you can try out Redmond Web without actually editing your real review. And if you go to My Reviews view, you will see the reviews that you're an author on. For editors, you will need to go uh, from Archie, right click the title and click edit in Raven Web. So that was the small tour I had. Let's now get back to the presentation. So you, I would like to share some of the news with Raven Web because there are three new big features that I think make a big improvement for review production. And these features are only available in Redmond Web, which means that you will have to only use Redmond Web if you want to use these features. The first feature is the Great Pro integration, where we're uh, connecting Redmond Web to Great Pro, so it, basically to make it easier for you to create some of your findings table and also to update them easily. So from now on, with this new integration, you'll be able to automatically pull in all the analysis data from Refman to Grade Pro, edit your summary of findings table, and then see the result in Refman Web. If you then make changes to an analysis result, you can easily pull in those changes into that same table to make sure um, your summary of findings table is, is always up to date. So from now on, all editing of the summary of findings table uh, will, will be in Grade Pro. That includes authors and editors. And the next feature I want to mention is study-centric data. So this is a feature uh, where we move away from the big analysis table where you enter data. Instead, you'll structure your data around studies. Uh, and input the data within each study. So this offers you a more structured way um, to input your uh, result data, but also a more structured way to set up your analysis as, you, as you'll basically just be choosing which outcome it is, what's the control intervention, what's the experimental intervention, and possible subgroups, and then also automatically Refman will be able to identify the results that apply to that um, criteria. Uh, and the third and last feature I have is uh, risk of bias too. So this is a new uh, update to the risk of bias methodology that Cochrane wants to introduce. And we have made that available in Refman Web in the pilot phase. Um, so if you want to use it, you need to join the pilot. And the best way to do that is to contact Ella Fleming. Um, but the basic changes with Risk of Bias 2 is that the domains are now fixed. And in Redman Web, you will be able to, if you are in the pilot, add Risk of Bias 2 in the analysis. So for each result, you can now add a Risk of Bias judgment. Uh, because that's where your judgments should be. 
and, and those were the new three major improvements in Redman Web, but of course we're working on many more um, that you can access and see on our knowledge base and in Redman Web. So I wanted to show you the Redman Web Roadmap because this is a place where you can go if you want to learn uh, what we're working on now and what is planned for the future. So this roadmap is divided into now, next and future. And in now, you can see what we're working on in this quarter. In next, you can see problems that we're trying to solve in the upcoming uh, time. And the reason they're in next is because they we know that they're very valuable, but we don't really know exactly how we will do it. The future uh, list shows things where we're not certain about what the value is, uh, where we don't know how to do it, and there's not yet a plan for it to be implemented, but we know it's important. Uh, and so you can uh, you can access this roadmap through the link on the bottom. Uh, and of course, we're open to any suggestions and input to this. And you can always ask for new features just by contacting us on email or send in the form. Uh, and so last but not least, I know that it's a, often a big step to move towards using a new tool. So we know that and we're trying to support you. Uh, on the Cochrane training website, there's a bunch of resources that you can use. So we have webinars showing you uh, Revman Web in more detail than I've been able to show you now. We have the Revman Web knowledge base where basically anything you can do in Revman is, is described and how to do it with really helpful uh, articles and screenshots. And of course, like I showed you in the demo, we have practice reviews where you can use Revman Web without impacting your review. And then there's a short uh, page on how to start using Revman Web. Um, so that was it for me. I hope this was a helpful introduction to Redman Web. And if you have any questions at all, please come back and write to us through redman at cochrane.org. And join us on Twitter because I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you for listening. <laughs>